Welcome everyone. Thank you so much for joining me for the, the UCalgary um, presentation for homeschool applicants. You can go ahead and scan the QR code on the slide there to access our digital view book. It has all the different resources that you'll need to learn more about the University of Calgary. It has all of our different programs uh, and program requirements for you to check out as well. So a really great resource to use. Before we begin the presentation, I would just like to acknowledge the land that we are currently located on as the traditional territories of the people of the Treaty 7 region in southern Alberta, which includes the Blackfoot Confederacy comprising of the Siksika, Bigani, and Ghana First Nations, as well as the Sutuna First Nation and the Stony Nakoda, which includes the Chiniki, Bearspaw, and Wesley First Nations, and we're also home to the Métis Nation of Alberta Region 3. Uh, my name is Jillian and I am the coordinator for the National Student Recruitment Team at the University of Calgary. Um, I was also a alumni from the University of Calgary and I graduated with a Bachelor of Commerce degree. So I'm really excited to sort of um, talk about my uh, experience um, and hopefully share a little bit more information um, about the University of Calgary just to give you guys a better idea. So here we have our campus, um, sort of like a, a little community um, that has um, everything that you'll need throughout the year. Um, so if you plan on living on campus, it'll be right there. Just in the back, you'll see residents. Um, and it's basically, it takes about 10 minutes to walk from one side of campus to another. So although it's quite big campus, um, it's really accessible. Uh, and and you can basically find anything that you'll need uh, throughout the year right right on campus. We have different athletic facilities available for students. We have your health and dental services. We have an optometrist on campus, a pharmacy, um, and then all the different food places that you'll need um, throughout throughout your time at the University of Calgary. Um, we also have a train station that's located right along the campus there, really easy access. It's maybe about a 15 minute train ride to downtown um, and you get a U-Pass included in your fees so you can easily uh, commute all around the city uh, if you need to. If you do plan on living on campus, uh, then you'll just want to make sure that you apply before May 1st to guarantee a uh, two years residence. Um, and typically it's a shared uh, shared living uh, situation. There are single rooms avail available, but they're lottery based, so they're randomly chosen. Um, but it's kind of the whole point of living on campus is to meet new people and really become immersed within the whole campus community. So it's a good idea to to have a roommate in the first place. And we have a matching service that is um, available when you apply uh, to residents uh, and they'll basically match you with somebody that uh, you have a lot of uh, things in common with and you'll be able to get along with. We also have a meal plan program. It's an all you care to eat meal plan um, that students living on campus can have access to. Um, 
basically you go to the dining center three times a day, eat as much as you need, and they have all the different food options available. So if you're vegetarian or vegan or halal or, or gluten-free, then you can totally uh, find uh, good meals um, that can, that can um, meet those needs. We also have a um, sort of a a nutritionist uh, on on hand uh, with the the wellness center so they can always help with your meal planning as well um, but like i said living on campus really gives you that opportunity to be present <laughs> right on campus and close to all of those different services that you'll need um, really gives you an introduction into that like vibrant student life that's right on campus um, and the ability to make friends really easily, um, lifelong friends as well. A lot of my friends who did live on campus are still really close with the people that they, they lived with um, during their time at university. And it's also a really convenient way to live. You're close to all of your classes. You don't have to commute to, to school. It's just a five or 10 minute walk. Uh, so that's also incredibly uh, convenient as well. When you guys get to university, um, you'll you know, be focused on your academics and studying and all of that. But um, it's also a really good idea to get involved in different activities across the campus. Um, and at the University of Calgary, we have a lot of different things that you can get involved in. There's different uh, clubs that you can choose from. We have the U Calgary Cares program where you can get some volunteer work done. Uh, we also have the Emerging Leaders program uh, where you can get some really beneficial leadership skills. Um, you could work at the campus radio um, or write for the gauntlet, like there's so many different things that you can get involved in and gain new skills, meet new people, um, and just have a really great time at the University of Calgary. Um, and all these different things on campus just give you that chance to make an impact uh, during your time in university um, and really make your time at the University of Calgary a lot more memorable and, and fun. Um, so we have different ways that you can enhance your overall degree. Um, we have embedded certificates that you can you can add into your, your program, um, such as uh, sustainability studies or entrepreneurial thinking. Um, and this is a really great way for you to take other courses and at no extra cost um, or time in your degree. Um, but, but you're able to kind of expand your knowledge a little bit more um, and really um, enhance your, your, overall, your overall degree. We also have a lot of different research that's available for students. Um, that's a really great way for you to get some hands-on learning uh, during your time at the University of Calgary, get some good references. Um, maybe there's like a, a paid research experience or a, an abroad, a, that sort of a, a research experience abroad as well. Um, so lots of fun ways that you can get some hands-on learning during your degree um, and uh, will be really helpful after you graduate. So these are all the different faculties that we have at the University of Calgary, um, ranging from the Faculty of Arts, which is super diverse faculty with a lot of different programs to choose from to the coming School of Medicine, which has two undergraduate degree programs, uh, including Bachelor of Health Sciences and Community Rehab. In between, we have the Faculty of Science, uh, which have programs such as astrophysics or plant biology. They also have a new science internship program that allows students to complete a full paid um, work term uh, during their degree and get some relevant work experience. Um, we also have the Haskin School of Business, which has um, co-op um, available to get some work experience as well, again, paid, um, and have different concentrations like um, international business, which was my concentration, or you could do accounting or finance or supply chain, so a lot of different programs to choose from. It's also direct entry from, from high school, which is really nice. You can choose your concentration right away as well. 
We also have the Schulich School of Engineering. Um, again, they also have an, a paid internship that's available for students. Um, they also have a lot of different clubs that you can get involved with. They actually have um, a solar car club where some engineering students created like a whole solar car um, and enter that into a competition where they ended up beating out Harvard. So some really, really cool uh, things like that um, students can expect to to get involved with and, um, you know, graduate with something like that on their resume is, is amazing. We also have the Faculty of Kinesiology, which is rated the number one sports science school in North America. Um, and it's a really cool fact, faculty. They have a lot of research that goes on um, in their human performance lab, which is where they measure the movement of the human body. Um, they always have some really cool things going on there. They've designed David Beckham soccer cleats in the past. They've um, designed different Adidas sporting products. Um, so uh, students can also volunteer themselves um, to, to do certain things for research, like measuring VO2 levels and, and that sort of thing, and um, a really great way for, for students to get involved in, and participate um, and experience some, some interesting things as well. We also have the Brooklyn School of Education. So they have a five-year combined degree that you could complete um, if you wanted to do a bachelor of education degree, as well as another undergraduate degree in, for example, um, like mathematics or sciences or sociology um, or like kinesiology. Um, you can do a combined degree in five years. With the Faculty of Nursing, uh, it's a direct entry um, program to become a registered nurse. Um, and they actually have this really cool VR simulation lab that students um, will be able to experience in the classroom just to get some hands-on learning before they go out in the field. So those are some of the faculties, or these are the faculties that we have at the University of Calgary, some of the programs um, that I mentioned, but you can find all of our programs in the Digital Viewbook or um, online on our Explore Programs page. Um, so you can check out all the different programs, do some research to figure out what program you're really interested in, see what that program offers, look at different career opportunities, and just get a better idea of what it'll offer you after you graduate. Um, and that can help with your decision making if you haven't figured out what program you want to go into yet. So once you figure out what program you're you're interested in, then of course you'll want to apply. Our applications opened October 1st. So if you haven't applied already, you'll want to do so as soon as possible. Um, I always say the earlier, the better. Um, that way we can evaluate you um, sooner rather than later. Um, and basically how our um, evaluation kind of works is you'll submit your application, We'll be able to um, do like an early evaluation based on your grade 11 marks or any grade 12 courses that have already been completed uh, and then possibly offer you a tentative offer of admission based on on your your grade 11 marks um, our evaluation process is sort of like a continuing continual process um, we'll be able to reevaluate once new grades come in um, to see if, if they meet the, the competitive average for the program that you're interested in. Um, and by that time, we'll have, you know, your, your grade 12 marks from your first semester, or if you have like grade 12 marks completed um, after, after the fall semester, um, then we can reevaluate. Um, and that's kind of going into our standard admission process. Um, yeah, so after you, um, so during your application process, you'll be able to select two program choices. So your first program choice is gonna be the program that you're really interested in, that's what you really want. Your second program choice is more of a backup. So just in case you don't get into your first program choice, you have a better likelihood of getting into your second. So make sure when you're selecting your second program choice, it's something that has a lower admission requirement um, and that 
it's a program that you still enjoy and you'd be fine to go into as well. Um, so you want to be a little bit strategic with, with choosing your, your program choices. Um, a few uh, uh, pieces to keep in mind when you are applying. So say you're interested in the Bachelor of Health Sciences. Um, you'll want to note that there is a supplementary application process that is uh, included. Um, they want to make sure that, that you have a good idea of what um, the program is all about and they want to make sure that you're a good fit. With fine arts like dance and music, you'll need to audition for. Uh, with visual studies, you'll need to submit a portfolio. But then all of our other programs um, that we have, we're just looking at your transcripts. Um, so we don't require like an essay or a personal statement or anything like that. We're really just looking at your transcripts to determine admission. Um, so what we're really looking at is those five required courses based on the program that you're, that you're interested in. And then we'll calculate your average using those five required courses. So for example, say you're interested in the Bachelor of Arts, uh, we're gonna be looking at your English, three approved courses, and then one other approved course or option. If you're interested in engineering, for example, it's a little bit more specific. We have um, your English, pre-calculus, calculus, chem, and then either physics or biology. If you apply to engineering through the biology route, then you'll be required to complete the four-week bioengineering institute um, in August prior to when you start in the fall. And that will just give you some like physics background so that you're, you can be successful in the program. Um, but essentially that's kind of what we're looking at. We're looking at those five required courses and then we use those courses to calculate that average to see if it meets the competitive average. You'll notice that there's averages listed there as well as your view book and our website. Those are estimated averages. So they're based on the previous year um, so it can fluctuate, it can change, but that average does typically give us a good idea of where that program will kind of end up. So it is a good, um, a good uh, thing to look at, but just still, you know, uh, keep in mind that it could change. Um, so as a homeschool applicant, um, basically you can uh, be eligible for the program that you're interested in if you have completed um, courses in the Canadian curriculum. So that would be like a, a provincial diploma exam um, of the required those five required courses um, for your program. Um, if you completed the U.S. curriculum. Um, and uh, completed the high school diploma with acceptable scores, um, or if you completed um, those five, and you've completed those five appropriate um, tests as well. Um, if you completed um, the, uh, a program, like an international curriculum, um, then you'll just need to make sure that you satisfy any of the requirements under the college entrance examinations. Um, so those are sort of the pieces that you would need to keep in mind. Um, when you're applying for the University of Calgary. With diverse qualifications, so that's um, a process that students can go through um, if they've experienced significant hardship um, or achieved excellence outside of academics. Um, and you'll find that on your application um, as something that you can check off uh, if you feel like you fit those those qualifications. Um, there's also the Indigenous submission process. So if you do identify as Indigenous and you have proof of identity, then you can all, also select that on your, on your application. Um, with both of those pieces there though, uh, we always will evaluate using a standard admission process um, and then if you don't receive an offer using the standard admission process, then we'll always, um, then we'll be able to consider you under those other processes. So different exams and tests that homeschool applicants can use are AP exams. Those are the most common. Um, say you're missing a course, um, like you don't have your, your mathematics 30-1 for the program that you, you're applying to, you could 
take uh, an AP exam to, to supplement that. Um, or IB courses, you could also use both AP and IB, AP and IB courses. Um, if you get a grade of four or higher with AP exam or a grade of five or higher with IB courses, then you uh, could be eligible for some university course credit, something to keep in mind. We also can take, you know, any uh, curriculum, like provincial uh, curriculum um, through an accredited school uh, to meet the requirements for your those required courses. Um, and we'll also be able to use uh, an SAT subject test if you've completed that already. And then, like I said earlier, um, those your application is going to be reviewed using those five required courses that you've completed, and we're going to calculate that admission average using those courses. Um, like I said earlier as well, it's important to apply early um, and upload or submit those those um, those transcripts for us to evaluate, because um, some programs can fill up, um, it's a good idea to get everything in as soon as possible so that we can evaluate you sooner rather than later. Um, if you did complete a SAT subject test um, previously, then these are the equivalencies um, for some of those subject um, tests. Um, if you completed a literature, for example, that would be equivalent to our English 30-1 requirement. So after you submitted your application, you'll want to make sure that you upload your transcripts um, on your student center for us to begin the evaluation process. Um, it says March 15th there is the deadline, but like I said earlier, earlier the better so that we can just get that evaluation, evaluation process rolling. And then your final official transcripts will need to be submitted um, by August 1st. If you are an Alberta student or you've completed like the Alberta curriculum, then and you've applied through Apply Alberta, then we'll be able to receive your transcripts automatically um, on your behalf through through Apply Alberta. So kind of a, an easier process. And then um, basically any courses that you are planning to complete, um, for the fall 2022 intake will need to be completed by June 30th. Um, so please keep that in mind as well. Um, so this is sort of a breakdown of what your, your tuition and cost will look like for a full year. Um, a really great tool to use is our cost estimator. So you can scan that code there on the slide. And that will just give you a good idea of what um, the tuition fees will look like for your specific situation. Say you're um, not planning on living on campus, or you are, you can like filter that out and 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 give a it'll give a better estimate for you. Um, so I would recommend taking a look at the cost estimator and then um, and then choosing uh, whichever options uh, are available. Something to help with funding for your, your tuition are uh, scholarships and awards. And we have three different categories. So with automatic awards, you don't need to apply for. We have, for example, the President's Admission Scholarship. So if you get a 95% or higher, you automatically get $5,000. We also have the High School Entrance Awards. So um, basically, um, you just submit one application and then it includes all the different scholarships that are available under that category. So pretty easy process. Shouldn't take you too long either. It's about 15 minutes and it's just uh, some yes or no questions. Um, and then you'll be able to uh, most likely get some, some form of funding. Uh, we also have the prestige awards uh, category. Um, so again, it's just one application to prestige awards. It includes all the different scholarships under under prestige awards um, and the deadline to apply for prestige awards is December 1st. So another good reason to apply early so they can also be uh, apply and be considered for prestige awards. And this um, application process takes a little bit longer. It's going to be a few hours, but you just want to be really mindful of the answers that you're putting putting uh, in there. 
Um, so yeah, that's kind of what our, our scholarships and awards are like. Um, if you have any kind of questions, we have some webinar uh, coming up for awards um, that will kind of give a deep dive into what to expect on the application and uh, make sure that you stand out. And um, so be sure to, to pre-register for our webinar um, in, in November. So this kind of leads us near to the end of the presentation. Um, just to give you a rundown of kind of the application process and break that down. Uh, the first step is really to research all the different programs that we have and what the program requirements are so to make sure that you meet them. Um, but a really good idea to, to really get a good understanding of the programs that we have, um, what they have to offer, look at the career opportunities, all of that stuff, just to make sure that you're making um, a sound a decision. And then you'll want to submit your application uh, and pay the application fee online. Um, and then you'll be able to have access to uh, your student center, which is like a student portal. That's where you'll be able to upload your, your documents to your student center. Unless you're an Alberta applicant, then you don't need to upload your documents. Um, we'll be able to receive those on your behalf. And then you'll be able to also apply for your, your scholarships and awards through your student center. Um, again, prestige awards is by December 1st, and then your high school scholarships and award deadline is March 1st. Um, and then throughout the application cycle, you'll want to make sure that you continuously check your student center for any items on your to-do list, or um, that's also where you'll be able to monitor your admission status. Uh, and then if you do plan on living on residence, you'll just want to make sure that you submit the application before May 1st to guarantee your first two years. Uh, and then uh, hopefully you will receive and accept your offer and pay the deposit by May 1st, and then you'll start classes in September. Um, so I'll stick around here. If you guys have any questions at all, feel free to, to put them in the chat um, and I can answer them. Um, if you have any questions later on that you think of, you can always um, email us at future.students at ucalgary.ca or find our regional accounts on our website um, to email based on the region that you're located in. Um, we also have different uh, social media where you can find us on Instagram, Facebook. Um, you can uh, get a really good idea of some um, student life uh, on our social media. Um, look at, uh, get some reminders throughout the application cycle and just keep to up to date with everything. Our YouTube channel has some really good sessions that you can check out um, to learn more about awards um, and, and programs and faculties as well. And they also have, you'll be able to find uh, our virtual campus tour there, tours there. Um, you can also send us some uh, questions on WhatsApp um, if you have uh, some, some quick questions you want answered. And we also have our uh, Choose You Calgary podcast that you can take a listen to um, and learn a little bit more about things going on at the University of Calgary and then also different faculties that you might be interested in. And then you can also check out our street view as well um, just to see our, where we're located and, and get a good idea of um, what the University of Calgary is like. Um, so thank you everyone for tuning in. Um, uh, like I said, feel free to reach out if you have any other questions. Um, we're happy to help. We're here to, to support you guys. Um, but uh, have a wonderful evening and thank you so much.